Hi, Sai Uchinanchu and Uchinanchu supporters. Rob Kajiwara here. Earlier today, I posted on my social media accounts the letter from the United Nations that um, that basically says it's it's encouraging independence for Hawaii and also for other peoples and nations across the world that are in similar situations um, as Hawaii such as Okinawa. So yes, this is a, a very important letter. Um, however, it's not it's not a new letter. It actually came out on February 25th last year, 2018. Um, so it's been out for almost a year now. So most Hawaiians are very familiar with this letter by now. However, for everyone else, <laughs> uh, n not so much. Uh, um, other people in the world probably haven't really heard about this letter uh, yet, including people in Hawaii who are not Hawaiian. That's right. E uh, even many people in Hawaii who are not Hawaiian uh, still don't know about this letter because the mainstream media here in Hawaii doesn't talk about Hawaiian issues. It's they're they're all owned and controlled by American companies, big American companies. So they focus on American issues and not Hawaiian issues, really. Um, and in fact, a lot of them uh, receive funding from the U.S. military. Yeah, the U.S. military gives a lot of money to a lot of different uh, organizations and stuff. So um, a lot of the um, a lot of the mainstream media in Hawaii is really reluctant to say anything that might even be remotely critical of the military which is why so so many people in Hawaii still don't even know about this letter even though it's really it's a really important letter it's truly groundbreaking yes yeah, so a lot of people all around the world are talking about this letter because it's so important um, it's from um, an independent expert at the United Nations from the office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights Dr. Alfred Desaius is his name, and um, it's an important letter because it basically supports the independence for Hawaii and uh, many other nations in a similar position as Hawaii, such as Okinawa. Um, other nations would include Guam, Puerto Rico, uh, Catalonia, and West Papua, among others. I'm sure there are others, but those are the ones that uh, come to mind. Um, however, I should note that it does not include Taiwan because the situation in Taiwan is very different uh, from Hawaii. It's really not similar at all um, in many ways because um, all the nations that I just listed um, are indigenous or they were at least um, like Catalonia, for example. I don't think they're in in indigenous, but um, they've lived there for a long time and they've had their own nation in Catalonia for a long time. So, uh, whereas Taiwan, um, Taiwan does have indigenous people, but the ones who are advocating for independence in Taiwan are Han Chinese. Uh, not even all of them, just just some of them. Some of them are pro-China. Some of them are uh, pro-independence. Um, but um, so uh, there, the situation in Taiwan is is not the same as Hawaii at all. It's very, very different. Uh, the Han Chinese are not indigenous to Taiwan. They only started living in Taiwan more in, in recent centuries. Um, so that's why this letter does not apply to Taiwan, in case you were wondering. Okay, but anyway, uh, talking about the letter, um, it, it's posted on social media. Um, I can put it on my blog too in case you want to see it it's elsewhere you don't have you know it doesn't have to come for me it's 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 kind of all over the internet now a lot of people have posted it um so yes it came out last year um as a result of hawaii's work at the united nations and more more specifically thanks to um his excellency uh minister of foreign affairs leon siu he is the minister of foreign affairs for Keopuni o Hawaii or the Hawaiian Kingdom and he's been going to the United Nations 
uh, for a long time, over a decade. He goes to the United Nations at both New York and Geneva. He goes around four times a year to both. So he's been working really hard for a long time to make uh, to, to uh, make connections at the UN and to share um, at the UN about Hawaii's issues. And um, so he and I work very closely together. We know each other very well. And um, so he tells me, you know, what goes on at the UN. And I tell him about Okinawa. I tell him everything that goes on at Okinawa. So he knows. He, he's very aware of, of the issues occurring in Okinawa. Um, and he has been sharing about Okinawa at the UN. And so when, when he talks to people at the UN and he explains Hawaii's issues, right? And he says, oh, and by the way, Okinawa is experiencing something very similar. Yeah, so people at the UN know about Hawaii and they know about Okinawa. And they know about the situations and the history and, and, and things like that. So... Um, yeah, this letter came out about a year ago, and it's been making a lot of a lot of noise. People are really excited about this um, because of what it means for Hawaii, and uh, now more and more people are learning um, about about this in Okinawa and about what it means for Okinawa. So um, basically, you know, this is an oversimplification, but. Uh, Basically, the, the UN uh, and, and international law supports Okinawa's independence if that is something that Okinawa wants to pursue. Now, Okinawa has been pursuing independence for a long time, ever since it was illegally annexed by Japan in 1879. There have been many Okinawans who have been trying to regain Okinawa's independence. <clears throat> um, the problem is um, the Japan government killed a lot of the Okinawan leaders. Um, yeah, that's right. They imprisoned and they killed, especially during the uh, Battle of Okinawa. During the Battle of Okinawa, they were afraid that uh, the Okinawans would turn against Japan and side with America or side with uh, the Allies. So they killed a lot of the Okinawan leaders. Um, and then also, um, even before that, after the annexation in 1879, a lot of the Okinawan leaders fled into exile overseas, like to Hawaii, like like my great grandparents, actually, they came to Hawaii in exile because of uh, the Japanese annexation. So that's that's one reason why there's a lot of strong Uchinanshu leaders overseas, including in Hawaii. And of course, a lot of them or their descendants, their children or grandchildren or even great grandchildren would go on to achieve a lot. Like here in Hawaii, the Okinawans are politically strong. Politically, they're very influential. Okinawans here are, are pretty wealthy. Uh, there's a lot of doctors and lawyers and business owners here in Hawaii. Um, political leaders, you name it. Okinawans in Hawaii have done very well. Um, so, um, but of course, that kind of um, hurts Okinawa in terms of leadership, right? If all of the, if most, not all, but if a lot of the leaders flee overseas, and then a lot of them who stayed behind were killed during the war on purpose by Japanese soldiers, well, obviously that creates a, a problem. That creates a leadership gap, which is one reason why I think um, Okinawa, um, Okinawa, isn't isn't uh, uh, independent right now because of a lot of the leaders are gone. But anyway, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people in Hawaii, a lot of Hawaiians and also people all over the world who do support Okinawa and Okinawan independence. So, um, and uh, they're supportive of the Okinawan independence movement and the leaders in Okinawa. Um, so yeah, it is being pursued. It is being pursued. It's a little hard to get information on this, but currently around 20 to 25 percent of the population in Okinawa right now supports independence. Um, it's a little hard to gauge because a lot of Okinawans are afraid to openly support independence because 
they know they're going to be watched by the Japan government. So yeah, the Japan government does watch people who support Okinawan independence, including me. They watch me. I know they do. They watch they watch all of the Okinawan leaders, all of the Okinawan independence leaders in Okinawa. It's just what they do because Japan is really a fascist government. I mean, people in a lot of people in Hawaii are saying that. A lot of people all over the world are saying that. A lot of Americans are saying that. That Japan is kind of a fascist government. And Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is a dictator. It's not a real democracy. People all over the more and more people all over the world are saying these things about Japan. People are getting very concerned about Japan under the leadership of Prime Minister Abe. So I just want to clarify, though, that the letter was not sent to me. Uh, the letter was actually sent to members of the U.S. government. Uh, the letter is officially addressed to the to U.S. judges, uh, Honorable Gary W. B. Chang and the Honorable Jeanette H. Castagnetti. I'm sorry if I'm saying their name wrong. And to members of the judiciary for the state of Hawaii. That's who the um the letter is officially addressed to. Um, however, I know that a lot of other U.S. government officials were also sent copies of the letter, such as uh, the president and the secretary of state and um, many other government officials. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to clarify. It wasn't not sent to me, okay? It was sent to U.S. government officials. Um, and, of course, a copy was also sent to uh, Minister Leon Siu. And that was how I first found out about it because he told me about it. Now, um, you might be wondering, well, if the UN supports Hawaii's independence and if a lot of people around the world support it and if um, international law supports Hawaii's independence, why isn't Hawaii independent yet? And um, the simple answer to that is that because Native Hawaiians in Hawaii nowadays are the minority. Yeah, we are the minority because of all the genocide that happened against uh, Native Hawaiians, all the terrible things that America has done here in Hawaii and to the Hawaiian people. Um, also because of the, um, they, the American government encouraged, and even to this day they still um, encourage Americans, American settlers to come from the continent, from North America to come and live in Hawaii so that um, the population of Hawaii, Native Hawaiians, is shrinking compared to the population of foreigners. So that's why Hawaii is still illegally occupied by the United States in spite of all the international support there is for Hawaii. And um, so if the majority population of Hawaii doesn't support independence, at least not right now, um, then the countries all around the world are afraid to publicly voice their support. Privately, they, they support, but um, they're afraid to go to say anything against the United States, right? Because the United States is such a powerful and influential country. So they're, they're also afraid to, to say it right now. Um, if the majority population of Hawaii isn't quite ready for that. Um, but it's definitely heading in that direction. More and more people are learning about independence and more and more people are supporting independence here in Hawaii and elsewhere. Um, in fact, the schools, even the schools, the public schools in Hawaii are starting to teach the children about it more and more, including in the colleges. Um, that's, that's where I uh, really first learned about it and that's how I first got involved and started supporting it was when I was in college at the University of Hawaii. Um, it's required now to take a, um, a Hawaiian studies course at the university and in all the universities, um, an entire University of Hawaii system here in order to graduate or to get any type of degree or certificate, you have to take um, at least one Hawaiian studies course. And so that's how I first learned about it. And more and more people are learning about it as well. So I, it is going to happen at some point. And it's, it's continuing to grow every day. Um, 
Yeah, and I think the same is going to be true for Okinawa. And uh, just keep in mind for all you uh, skeptics and haters out there, and I know you're watching. I know you're, you, uh, you, a lot of Japanese right wing nationalists love to, uh, to troll my YouTube channel and my social media accounts, and they just love to troll and try to cause trouble and disruption and post spam and stuff. Um, um, you know, this is not an opinion, this is international law. International law supports independence and rights just basic human rights for both Hawaiians and Okinawans. And so if you don't like that, well, sorry, that's the law. I think I've said enough about that for now. We can continue to talk about the possibility of independence for both Okinawa and Hawaii in future videos. Um, but it's such a huge topic, right? That you can't, you can't cover everything in just one video. So it's gonna, you know, we'll just continue talking about it in future videos. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel if you would like to see more of our videos. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Mataya.